Good morning, you're watching News I-24-7. Today's headlines are... FN, Polish counterpart discuss Afghan situation, bilateral relations. Foreign Minister Mekdun Shamonu Kwashi Wednesday received a telephone call from Spigny Law, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland. Besides exchange of views on the unfolding situation in Afghanistan, the two foreign ministers also discussed bilateral relations, a press release issued here by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said. Foreign Minister Kwashi advised the Polish Foreign Minister of Pakistan's perspective on Afghanistan, stressing the need for peace, stability and security as well as economic well-being of the Afghan people. We underlined the importance of engaging with Afghanistan and positive messaging on part of the international community to preclude humanitarian crisis and to ensure economic stability. Foreign Minister Kwashi underlined that the EU could play a pivotal role in this regard. The Polish Foreign Minister expressed deep gratitude to Pakistan for facilitation and evacuation of their citizens and others from Afghanistan. In the context of bilateral relations, Foreign Minister Kwashi said Pakistan had close ties with Poland and considered it an important member of the European Union, and a bilateral partner. He said Pakistan remained committed, to further enhancing the relationship with Poland in all areas. The Foreign Minister invited Foreign Minister Spigny Law to visit Pakistan at an appropriate time. The Polish Foreign Minister accepted the invitation. The two foreign ministers agreed to remain in close contact. Pakistan to take all measures to ensure strategic stability in region, NCA the National Command Authority Common Bok, on Wednesday asserted, that Pakistan would take all measures to ensure, the strategic stability in the region, without entering into an arms race. Prime Minister Imran Khan chair 25th meeting of the NCA held here at the headquarters of Strategic Plans Division. All members of the NCA including Federal Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Defense, Finance and Interior, Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee, Chiefs of Army, Navy and Air Force, and Director General Inter Services Intelligence, EZ, attended the meeting. According to a press release issued here by the PM Media Wing, NCA expressed full confidence in the command and control systems as well as security measures in place to ensure comprehensive security of strategic assets of Pakistan. The NCA reaffirmed that Pakistan as a responsible nuclear state would continue to contribute meaningfully towards the global efforts to improve nuclear security and nuclear non-proliferation measures. A detailed briefing was given to NCA on evolving conflict dynamics in the region. The NCA noted with concern the destabilizing massive arms buildup in the conventional and strategic domains. The NCA viewed these developments as detrimental to peace and security and asserted that Pakistan would take all measures to ensure the strategic stability in the region without entering into an arms race. The NCA reiterated maintaining full spectrum deterrence in line with the policy of credible minimum deterrence and expressed satisfaction on the development of strategic capabilities. The NCA appreciated high standards of training and operational readiness of the strategic forces and appreciated the scientists and engineers whose dedicated contributions have enabled Pakistan to successfully pursue the desired objectives. Afghan reconstruction not zero-sum game for China, Pakistan as the Taliban reportedly invited six neighboring nations including China, to attend an event dedicated to the announcement of the composition of new Afghan government and sought for cooperation with China, there has been rising speculation about China's potential participation in Afghanistan's reconstruction. Some even went further to suggest that China's potential participation may be against Pakistan's interests in the country. The latest example of such rhetoric is an opinion piece published by the Israeli newspaper Arrays, which claimed that as Beijing flexes its muscles, its left square bracket Pakistan's right square bracket attempts to start a bidding war for access to Kabul will be short-lived. Such voices are deliberately trying to undermine positive cooperation among China, Pakistan and others in Afghanistan as well as the close relationship between China and Pakistan, 
according to an article published by Global Times on Wednesday. While it is not uncommon to see certain forces try to sabotage close China-Pakistan relations by spreading malicious speculation about bilateral cooperation in areas such as the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Comic Peck, a flagship project under the Belt and Road Initiative, it is a new development for these forces to use the Afghan issue to sow discord between China and Pakistan. Yet, anyone with a basic knowledge of the regional geopolitical status quo will know that such ill intentioned rhetoric will not change China-Pakistan cooperation or deter China's possible participation in the reconstruction of Afghanistan other than making more noises. Afghanistan is an independent sovereign state and it has the right to choose global partners when it comes to future reconstruction projects. The Taliban has indicated that it wants to pursue cooperation with countries such as China as it rebuilds the war-torn country. Delta remains, most concerning, covered variant. WHO says the fast-spreading Delta variant remains the most concerning coronavirus strain despite the emergence of the new variant, World Health Organization, WHO officials said Tuesday. I think the Delta variant for me is the one that's most concerning because of the increased transmissibility, said Dr. Maria Van Kerkhove, the Geneva-based. UN Health Agency's technical lead, for COVID-19, speaking during an online question and answer session. It's doubly transmissible compared to the ancestral strain, which means that it can spread to more people. Dr. Van Kerkhove said that Delta continues to evolve, and scientists are studying to see how the virus might be changing, with new variants continuing to emerge. Last week, WHO announced it was closely monitoring the new variant, also known as B1621, which was first identified in Colombia in January 2021. It is among five variants of interest. The agency is tracking at the global level. New has a number of mutations that suggest it could be more resistant to vaccines, WHO said at the time, noting that further research will be needed. Dr. Van Kerkhove reported that the proportion of new cases in South America is increasing, but numbers are decreasing in other countries, where the Delta variant is circulating. Dr. Michael Ryan, head of his Health Emergencies Program, explained that viruses essentially compete against each other. Currently Delta tends to outcompete other variants, he said. While more COVID-19 variants are to be expected, not every variant means the sky is going to fall in. He added, each variant needs to be looked at for its characteristics in terms of its potential to cause more severe disease, its potential to transmit, its potential to escape vaccines. Globally, the overall COVID-19 caseload is quite a worrying situation, according to Dr. Van. Quetta's Bubti Stadium will host the season opening Cricket Association's T20 from 15 September while curtains will fall at the Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore, with the final of the Pakistan Cup on 30th of March, 2022. Apart from these two senior tournaments, the PCB will stage the National T20, Grady Azam Trophy, Cricket Association's Championship and Cricket Association's Challenge. This means there will be 157 matches in the period from 15 September and 30 March, making 2021 to 22 a mouth-watering, exciting and competitive season of domestic cricket. The details and schedule of the pathways cricket, including the U13, U16 and U19 tournaments, will be announced in due course. The participants who are either fully vaccinated or have received their first jabs will be eligible to participate in the season. Each participant will undergo first PCR test at his place of residence three days prior to travel, and will confine themselves to their homes until their scheduled travel. The PCB will conduct the second PCR test at the central station, subject to first negative test. During the tournament, rapid antigen tests will be carried out after every five days, or when the team travels to a different destination, while random RT tests will be conducted at select events. Any participant who tests positive in antigen test will be isolated immediately and undergo RT-dash.
If the test result is positive, then, you will be quarantined for 10 days. At team hotels, the players will be allowed to visit designated areas, with mask wearing and social distancing mandatory. Detailed PCB COVID-19 protocols have been shared with the team managers who, with the support of the team physiotherapist, will be responsible for the implementation. Meanwhile, the PCB has also confirmed umpire and match referee panels, for the senior events. The elite match officials will be involved. Baber Azam supports Pak squad selection comma Wazim Khan Pakistan Cricket Board Chief Executive Wazim Khan said on Wednesday that national captain Baber Azam is fully behind the direction that is being taken regarding announcement of the squads for the upcoming international assignments. PCB official said it has come to our notice that factually incorrect reports are circulating about the Pakistan national squad environment. On Tuesday afternoon, September 7, some of the players had a healthy and positive meeting with former Pakistan captain and member of the PCB Board of Governors, Raymond Roger, in which there was a consensus on the brand of cricket that needs to be played in the upcoming series and beyond. It is important that collectively we get firmly behind the squad so that they have the stability, backing and focus they need prior to going into the ICCT. 20 World Cup next month. Pack HC in UK assures resolution of community members' issues while addressing certain problems instantly. He assured that the remaining issues would be taken up with the concerned authorities in Pakistan. The High Commissioner also welcomed the suggestions of the diaspora members for the improvement of the services. A large number of community members attended the Issues regarding visas, nipples, pots, passports and property matters in Pakistan, a press release said. Under the directions of Prime Minister Imran Khan, the virtual Kali Kachari is being held at the High Commission every month. The diaspora members, who are particularly keen to know as to when Pakistan is going to be removed from the youth's red list for travel, Mosin said that he was in contact with the relevant UK authorities in this regard and removing Pakistan from the red list was his priority. The community members also appreciated the initiative of virtual Kali Kachari at the mission and termed it a useful platform for community facilitation. Thanks for watching News I 24 7. For more news, visit our website on www.newsi247.tv or follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook.